And it should be going up. And why can't I hear you? <laughs> That's not good. Uh, let me see. Got it. <laughs> Wait, you can hear me now? Yes. Perfect. How's it going, man? Um, it's still... I have it set up. It says... It says end broadcast, so it should be going live. Hello? Yeah, I'm still here. Wait, you can't hear me now? Okay, yes. now it's live. Perfect. Okay. Okay, cool. Perfect. <laughs> Technical difficulties. Up, Please stand by. Just normal Calvin behavior. Hey, no worries, man. Yeah, uh, just turning up your volume a bit. Yeah, so, uh, how's your day going? And well, a touch busy, but, you know. Mm -hmm. That's what comes with ruling the ocean. <laughs> just normal day as a shark. Exactly. What about you? Um, I stayed up somewhat late last night. <laughs> I've decided to start up my own blog talking about animals, and... I went from focusing on pumas, then I got sick of that, and now I'm surrounded by several books on ancient marine animals, as I'm working on one on mosasaurs. Really? Yeah, mosasaurs. Really? So, you go from Calvin the Carnotaurus, snow leopards, not to mosasaurs. <laughs> yes, mosasaurs. <laughs> Look, admittedly, and, and the reason I say that, I guess, for the chat listening is because he had been messaging me on Twitter or in our Sharks World Discord, and his icon was a snow leopard. So I was like, okay, cool guy. And then he edited his name, and then I was just like, oh, wait, that's Calvin the whole time. And I had sent you a friend request. I realized something that you had already sent me one like a long time ago. So I was like, okay, I feel like an asshole now. <laughs> You never knew it was me all along. Exactly. <laughs> Just the snow leopard in the skies. Sneaky little wanker you are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, about your blog. So, what drew you to Mosasaurus in particular? Just... Really just Rem in general right now. Actually, hang on, I'll just pull it up. Let me see what I have set up for it. Because I've broken it up into sections. I just haven't written any of the sections up yet. Alright, so we have Introduction, Notable Discoveries, Family Tree, General Anatomy, Life as a Mosasaur, Biggest of the Big, Supposed Living Mosasaurs, Could Mosasaurs Live in the Modern Day? Oh, are you aware of the uh, YouTube channel The Overseer? Shout out to Overseer, by the way. Yeah, yeah, I'm aware of him. I would definitely say if you're going to do a blog, check out some of his stuff, because I know he's been covering a few of them. But I can also send you anything interesting I come across. Indeed. <clears throat> but yeah, I remember... I don't know why I just got an interest in Mosasaurs. I think it was because of Prehistoric Planet. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. I still have yet to watch it, but I've heard nothing but good things about it. Oh my god, truth is scarier than fiction is in the live stream. Yo, wait, are you serious? <laughs> oh, well, looky there. Yes, he is. I was expecting Wild World to show up. And as soon as I say so that... You say that. <laughs> Speak of the devil and he shall appear. How's it going, gents? And then we have Shark365. I know he's a big fan of mine. <laughs> Always a pleasure to have him. <laughs> Is Megalodon yeah, real? Mosasaurs. I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, no. Question <laughs> that everybody wants to know. One thing I actually found interesting the other day was I was talking with someone about cryptozoology. 
And I remember they said that apparently recently they found another population of pygmy blue whale in the Indian Ocean. And I remember straight away, first thing I went to him was, is Megalodon still alive then? Of course. Well, hey. So, the thing... Um... Just... 20 meter long animal, and it needs to come up to the surface regularly to breathe, so... <laughs> I just thought I'd joke like, you know, Megalodon's still alive then. <laughs> exactly. So the thing is, a species of pygmy blue whales isn't something that I consider out of the question. Because I always say everything's explained through evolution. Mm. And these pygmy blue whales, they're just another species of blue whales that just happen to be a bit smaller. One of my recent videos covers <coughs> yep. genetic differences in two different groups of oceanic white tips. To where, mm -hmm. on paper, they're the same species, but on the mitochondrial and nuclear DNA level, there's differences between them. So from a technical standpoint, they're already different species. Mm. So I imagine they're going to start diversifying and differentiating each other. Look at the salmon shark and the poor people shark, for example. The pygmy blue whales is not something that I find, you know, out of the question. Completely plausible. That reminds me of, um, there's this one cat enthusiast I talk with on Discord a lot. Great guy if you ever need any uh, data on big cat weight. And just big cats in general. But if I remember correctly, he said to me that apparently there was a study a few years ago that found that Indian leopards and the African ones might actually be genetically distinct enough for them to be their own separate species. You see, I could believe that. So, uh, yeah, going back to the evolution thing, if there are uh, two different species that are living in, I guess they can be similar environments, but if there's enough differences where different factors will affect them differently, then yeah, they can start to differentiate to better optimize things. Indeed. Boy, that is just how evolution works. I mean, how, how many subspecies of brown bear are there? I saw something saying there could be as little as like 6 to as many as 19. And then, so, the thing about it is evolution, it's always in motion, but it's very very slow yeah and i guess well pertaining to another video of mine on a new understanding of shark evolution it kind of pertains to other species as well whereas like you can look at a species when you break it down into their morphology as in like their behaviors outer appearance organs etc a whole bunch of different things that go into that and then animals are always reacting to one another so we know Let's take these bears, for example. Mm -hmm. If one species of bear, they hunt moose, they hunt maybe some wolves or deer or whatever. And you have a separate species of bear that hunt maybe a few slightly different things. The prey that one bear species preys on, they're going to react differently and come up with different strategies than the other bear. So both of them are going to have to adapt differently. And mm -hmm. Therefore, their evolution is going to change because of that. And apply it to sharks, you can apply it to all these other animals. Probably why there's so many different species of bears. The differences might be minute, but because of all the changes in the different prey environments affecting them differently, they're going to change differently. Mm. Yeah, it, it reminds me of like I'm set back thinking here and there. Sometimes when I'm looking at stuff I see about animals, and it is just the case that animals tend to vary a lot just because of evolution. Like, if I remember correctly, I remember making quite a few animal uh, videos on Australian snakes, and I remember doing one on the King Brown, which is Australia's heaviest venomous snake. It's not the longest, it's just the heaviest. And if I remember correctly, there's actually behavioural differences between the northern and southern ones, where apparently the northern ones are actually more aggressive. Do they say as to why that is, or is this like just an observation they noticed? Just an observation. Maybe it's just because they have a bit more competition there or something. I mean, I think in one part of their range, they overlap with Coastal Taipan, I think it is, which is the longest venomous snake in Australia. Uh, so I guess a competition between the two biggest. Although, yeah. I'm... Though I guess we're... Sorry, go ahead. 
Although, if I remember correctly, I think the Taipan, uh, the coastal one, is actually more of like a rat eater. Feeds on rats, mice, and other rodents, whilst King Browns, they're basically just, uh, they eat anything they find. It can be other snakes, rodents, okay. other lizards, just whatever. Yeah, it makes sense. And then I guess if we're getting real scientific, the biggest, technically, by scientific standpoints, is whatever's the heaviest. That's why when we're talking about theropods, people always are like, excuse me, what's the biggest theropod? People say it's like, oh, the Giganotosaurus was the longest, or the Spinosaurus was the longest. All of them are cool. But in mm. terms of weight, usually it's between the T-Rex and the Giga, with the T-Rex being in favor so far. But it's usually in terms of weight in regards to anything, as far as what's the biggest. Yeah. You should hear Gecko Ram just rant about um, T-Rex when it comes to size and its comparisons with uh, other theropods. Him and I, <laughs> we were we record a video of us watching the Jack Horner documentary, Valley of the T-Rex. And I remember basically, like, every couple minutes he would go into a ten-minute rant on T-Rex. <laughs> <laughs> it got to the point where I was sat back thinking, like, does he even need me for this video? Exactly. Look, I get it. He, he's passionate about it. I, I can get that way when I have to sometimes debunk a few things about sharks. So when I'm telling people that... Sharks are extremely smart animals, and people are like, no, dolphins are the smartest animals in the oceans. Yeah, they're extremely smart. They have big brains to the human to the sea. And sharks still catch them. Explain that to me. Mm. <laughs> also, now, of course, proper context. It's mainly the big sharks, like tigers, great whites, makos, etc. Indeed. Also, just nice, right? So we have quite a few celebrities here today. So we have you, me, Sharks365... Wild World, Truth is Scary Than Fiction, and now the Animal Bow YouTuber Creature Challenge, and Gecko. Oh yeah, Gecko is here. Yeah, the fellow T-Rex man as well. Just for the record, T-Rex is also my favorite dinosaur, as it is for many folks. I know it's Wild World's favorite as well. So, we have men of culture here. Yes, the unoriginal ones. <laughs> Look, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. It's like that thing of my favorite cat's the lion. I think that's the same for a lot of other people. Yeah, I mean, look, we all watched Lion King when we were kids. Although in hey, saying, Wild World, if you're still in, the... sorry, go ahead. Well, I was just gonna say, although in saying that, my favorites are the jaguar and the snow leopard, which are also extremely popular. Yes, they are. Jaguars are heavily slept on. Uh, Wild World, I meant to ask, what is your favorite big cat? Because I I'm keep trying to remember whether or not it was the lion or the tiger. I know you love both. <laughs> See? Lion. There we go. Again, still a man of culture, regardless. I'm a basic boy. <laughs> so, one of the reasons why I've actually been, like, sort of delayed in terms of videos is I've recently... I've switched over from going from homeschool to public school. And it's in an entirely different town several hundred kilometers away so I haven't been able to work on videos unless I try figuring out how to use my phone for making videos and I remember so for that I ended up doing the biology class at the school and I remember someone asked me how it's going because it's an online thing they don't actually have a biology teacher at the school and I remember telling yeah, him like I'll good good features. yeah yeah so I remember going to him like oh it's going good and then I told him Right, that I was explaining to the teacher once, uh, that they outsourced it to from a college or something, um, that uh, uh, I was explaining to him with the lion's mane, the testosterone levels, and how that correlates with the coloration of the mane. And I remember as I was explaining it to him, um, one, one of the students unmuted his mic and he went, uh, I just want to ask a quick question, are you reading straight from the article about this? And I just replied going, no, I've read like a dozen books on big cats. And then I sent him the video I made on lines to show I wasn't lying. So, <laughs> so that made me laugh, just, are you reading straight from the article? And I remember telling one of the girls in my class about that before going, oh, I like that fact because I have long dark hair, so you know, fitting. Her entire reply just, that's not an image I need. 
was gonna say uh, I don't know I don't think that's the win you think it is <laughs> but you can learn a lot of things about animals by just looking at YouTube or just if you have a genuine interest you're gonna seek out facts and try to look for data and the information you're gonna come up with things and put two and two together hmm I love the comment in the chat right now. Just, Calvin is just a walking library at this point. That's basically it, yeah. <laughs> I mean, look, it's not a bad thing to be a walking library. Look, most people nowadays don't even think about stuff, or think about thinking, rather. Is one thing I always try to do with all my videos or anything is always provide the proper context, or ask questions that make people think. Like, make people question their epistemology your ten dollar word there like why do you believe in what it is that you believe in about a particular topic like mm -hmm. for example most again most people think sharks are dumb why do you think they're dumb most people can't answer that or if you just ask some simple questions you just put the option on the table to like here's why i think this is a certain way when someone asks you a question that you don't know you take a minute to think about it and you're like huh you know? Let me think about that for a sec. You know what I mean? Yeah. For me, I just really like getting books for videos because they just feel a whole lot more authoritative than just random junk I find on the internet. Like, I really liked using Cats of Africa by Luke Hunter for my Lion video. And as we can see, I think a lot of people did as well because Wild World just commented, I got Cats of Africa by Luke Hunter after seeing your video. <laughs> I'd, really? I'd, Look at there. I'd say that's probably one of my favorite books on cats. I'd say the next favorite is The Wild Cat Book by Fiona and Mel Sunquist. Just because it's a massive book on all the species. So there's a lot of information in there. They also have a bunch of references. So if I get interested in any further, I can just like go, hey, let me see if I can find these online. Like books are a lot better than most people think, the way I see it, because not only do you have the book itself, but a lot of books you might get list their references, so if you're looking for anything specific, you can just go, oh, okay, they reference here, blah, 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 and then you can go find the study online for more in-depth detail about it. Absolutely. Uh, that, that actually, you know, leads me to ask, are you a fan of audiobooks by chance? I don't really listen to audiobooks. I prefer to actually have the book itself, physical copy. <clears throat> uh, a lost art. Look, having physical books nowadays is slowly becoming more and more of a lost art. Yeah. I have a few physical books that are on my shark shrine, but the reason I ask this is for <coughs> any of my paleontology nerds out there. Oh, wait, let me see if I can. Just gonna this whole thing. unmute. Just gonna mute my mic, having a bit of a coughing fit. No <coughs> worries. So, for any of my uh, dinosaur fans out there, I'm gonna put in the chat a link to a book that definitely helped out my understanding, or maybe I can't put it in the chat. Big Cat Diaries, the best big cat show. I'm pretty sure Luke Hunter in Cats of Africa, he actually recommended a bunch of Big Cat Diary books on, I think it was Lion, Leopard, and Cheetah. Yes, the Tyrannosaur Dude. Chronicles. Okay, so, I actually have a, I actually so, have a copy of that. As you're saying, yes. fascinating read. Yes, fascinating read. Easily one of the best paleontology books. Now, admittedly, some of the info is outdated, but just the way it explains, just like basic understanding of like how evolution works, is an absolutely fantastic way as to how they break it down. Because it's not just, hey, we're talking about T-Rex and how big it was and how strong it was. No. It goes into how T-Rex evolved over time. And that's, that's the biggest point that I bring up whenever I have to tell folks that Megalodon isn't here anymore. Because people are always saying, like, do you think it exists? No, it doesn't. Hmm. One, because we haven't seen any evidence of it. But also because of the way evolution works. Where... With all this time, T-Rex didn't just become T-Rex overnight. Like no, somebody didn't snap their fingers and T-Rex was suddenly there. T-Rex became T-Rex 
over millions upon millions of years of tiny little changes in evolution. The Megalodon's the same way. So let's say for the sake of argument, if Megalodon was alive, which it's not, if it for some reason was alive, it wouldn't be the same animal. It would have changed. And the body plans of big sharks being 60 plus feet long just isn't present anymore. Hmm. Yeah, I remember thinking like that you... myself. It's more of those things of, like, the ship of Theseus. You, right? You know the whole thing of, like, you rebuild it and it's like, is it still the same ship? I just think that sometimes when I hear Three. of... I think of that sometimes when I hear of, um, some late surviving animals, like with the living mosasaurs that I remember uh, Wild World did a video on. Like, they've been... It's believed they've been extinct for 66 million years, so could you even still call it a mosasaur in the modern day? Perhaps a different species, but I think, again, this is where I always tend to ask people, like, when you say mosasaur and be like, I think mosasaur is still alive, it's like, okay, which species? Most of them couldn't tell you. Most people don't know that there's more than one species of mosasaur. Hmm. I think really the best then, way you could say mosasaurs are still alive is the clade mosasauria nor specific species yes that'd be about the best you and, uh, can refine it down exactly and also so to make uh, I guess to kind of add more context to a point I brought earlier about the plant of megalodon so everybody knows the great white shark usually average sizes Usually 16, 17, 18 feet in the occasional 20 footer, which is big for a great whale, like, like really big. But we see other sharks that get to around that same size. Tigers can get anywhere from 18 feet long. Wild World has done videos on how big tiger sharks can get. We know hammerheads can get around that same length. Or let's go back to theropods. T Rex, we knew it grew to around 12 meters in length. Now, outside of weight, we saw multiple big theropods that grew to around that same size, like Acrocanthosaurus, Carcharodontosaurus, Giganotosaurus, Maposaurus. This plan was in multiple different places in multiple spots, so we knew that plan was successful. If a plan is successful, we'll see it more often. We don't see any other big sharks outside of the big plankton eaters, so that's another reason as to why. <clears throat> By the way, speaking of sharks and books on sharks, on the trip back to my hometown so that I could actually do this interview on the school holidays, I actually picked up some books on sharks. Uh, I'll just see. I'll just see if I can find them quickly. Okay. No worries. Take your time. Um, I don't. I think you're gonna hate this book as soon as I just read out the title. Mad Evening Shark. Oh boy. Man-Eating Sharks, a terrifying compilation of shark attacks, shark facts, and shark legend. Uh, when was this even published? <laughs> I think 70s, let me see. Heard it all before, man. Uh, this edition published in 1976. Hey, man. One thing I always say is science is always written in pencil because new data is always coming forward. Back in the 1970s, most people's reference was, wait, 1970-something. Did Jaws come out around that time? It came out in 1975. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah, that, uh, that about sums up people's thoughts on it was Jaws at the moment. And then if you, again, this goes back to thinking about thinking. Someone says, I don't want to get eaten by a shark. And you ask him, why do you think a shark is going to eat you? You're usually going to reference, well, look at the movie Jaws, look at the documentaries. Okay, which documentaries? What do they talk about? What do the stats say? When you actually look at them, you tell them, and say, yeah, only 59 people have been killed by great whites in the past 440 years. I got a dumbfounded look. They're like, no way. I show them the stats. The books like that with those titles, at least to people thinking that way. Hmm. Well, I just, I just opened up this section on contents and you should just read the titles, there's... Well, it says 9, but it doesn't look like 9. So you want 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8... Yeah, it is 9 chapters. For a second, it looks smaller, but anyway. When sharks eat men, feeding frenzy of the shark, what is a shark, which are the deadly sharks? 
or do sharks each, the natural enemies of the shark, man against the shark, the fish that never sleeps, the making of jaws. They have a section on jaws. Mm -hmm. Of course. Yeah, I mainly just grab this because I don't mind having some older books here and there. Alongside the newest stuff. But yeah, I don't think I'm going to use... Uh, I think that's going to be something I'm going to use for like shark attack type videos. So, I suppose if there is to ever be a benefit from, from one of those... One way you can do it is to kind of look at how people thought back then and how people look nowadays as far as how things go. Like, everyone knows the movie Jurassic Park and the model that T-Rex was based off of. They usually make the T-Rex around the time around seven tons. It's like, hey, look, this T-Rex weighed around seven tons. And that was as big as it got. Now here we are nowadays with T-Rex in 10, maybe even 12 tons. And I see Gecko actually corrected me there. T-Rex was around 13 meters, so there we go as far as that goes. But it kind of goes to show you just like why I always say science is always written in pencil. Because new data is always coming about. I mean, how many changes has Spinosaurus gone through? Hmm. Yeah, Spinosaurus has changed a lot. <laughs> well, dinosaur, but a lot of changes. And uh, the second book on sharks I ended up getting, uh, it's actually two books in one. Uh, so the first one is titled Shark Hunters, and the other Whale of a Shark, both by the same author, Ben Crop. And it's based around Australian, shark. based around Australian shark stories. I, I love one of the I'm curious as to what that Whale of a Shark was about. Hmm. I love one of the titles of one of the chapters for the shark hunting book. Chapter 13, Shotgun for Sharks. That's the most American thing I've ever heard, using a shotgun to hunt sharks. Yeah, that, that, that sounds very American indeed. I know this is about Australian shark hunting, but I can easily imagine that going on in Florida somewhere right now. Yeah, no kidding. Actually, if you are looking for some. Sorry, go ahead. I'm pretty sure uh, what what's his name? Um, Shark Bites. When he did one of those like viral shark videos, he showed off one where they pulled a shark up to the surface and they shot it with a pistol. Because yeah, just Americans. Yeah, Americans. Our need to assert ourselves over everything is definitely one of the things we are known for. I probably don't like it, but I get that, you know, you can only control yourself, can't control other people. Mm. If you are looking for a good shark book, however, I would say, uh, I'll actually put the title in the Discord, or actually in the chat here. This is actually a very good shark book. It's called Emperors of the Deep. I have the physical copy on my shark shrine in the back here. But a very, very good greed. And it actually goes into shark hunting and what they're like, shark hunting tournaments actually add some proper context as to why they happen a little bit more of a deep dive and some of these gentlemen's experience with actually encounters with sharks including shark intelligence so that's another reason as to why i appreciate them hmm. i'll definitely make sure to check that book out after the stream if i remember to because i will admit i I do like searching around for books here and there, I even if it's not a subject I'm really, like, fully interested in at the moment, like, sharks. Still good to at least, like, search around for anything in case I do get an interest in the future so I can go, like, okay, here's the five books I want on sharks to quickly You should always be interested in sharks. Always. I'm kidding. You're fine. I've been sick for, like, five days straight. Yeah, that's been about the same with me, Zach. Has I been sick? What is it, a cold? Yeah, just a cold or something, I think. I, I remember they Didn't said... Didn't to ask. I, I remember they said at the school something like, apparently there's rounds of COVID going around. Although I remember them saying that, like, the sports captain there, he ended up getting COVID or something, and I asked him about it when he came to school finally, and he said that apparently it was just a migraine. 
So I don't know whether to trust them about saying, oh, COVID's going around the school. I just always made it the point that if there was ever a time where I rarely feel under the weather, but whenever I did, I just made sure that I drank plenty of water, I got some food in my stomach, and I got plenty of sleep. And my immune system would usually take care of the rest. Mm. Which, by the way, that's why people have an immune system. You have an immune system, so say you get sick, now, of course, obviously, you know, go see a doctor, because I don't want anybody dying, because, like, oh, I can tough it out. Mother Nature always wins. But usually, if you get some good sleep and make sure your body has nourishment so it can repair or kick out whatever it is and get good sleep, that can sometimes train your uh, immune system very, very well. But still, you know, go see a doctor. If you're genuinely sick, go to the hospital or the doctor. I don't need anybody dying because they listen to a Calvin stream. <laughs> Just, that, that made me think back to when, what's his name, Joe Rogan uh, ended up getting COVID and uh, he was taking, what was it, ivermectin, and everyone was going, what is he, you stupid? He, he's taking <laughs> he's taking horse dewormer, but at the same time, didn't it come out that a doctor actually prescribed that to him for treating COVID? Yeah. I think it was something like that. I didn't pay too close attention to the story, if I'm being honest. <laughs> I love Wild World's comment. I like how Calvin even checked primary sources for school COVID. <laughs> Hey, Zach, look, that's not a bad thing. Again, checking your sources is a good thing. Zach Mar Marchant just commented, he's basically Sheldon. <laughs> I'm, I'm Sheldon <laughs> with long hair. I say you got a bit of a clown in the chat. That so was a good thing. But, uh, for example, um, I, haven't post I didn't post a video last week. I have one of the works right now, but for April, I told both Wild World and Truth is Scarier Than Fiction that I'm working on a shark cryptid video. You know, I'm actually going to be covering multiples in them, but I'm making sure that I do my research. Mm -hmm. I've asked uh, Truth is Scary Than Fiction a few things about it, and then I'm probably going to be hitting a wild world asking him about what he's heard about some of the shark cryptids, because originally I thought there were only like, you know, one, two, three, maybe four shark cryptids. And then uh, let me see if I can send it to you in Discord. <laughs> And then, Truth, he sent me this picture. Um, I gotta find it first. Uh, no laughing stock. Mountain lion isn't the same as a bobcat. Those are two very different animals. Yes, they <laughs> are. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. I remember... Okay. Oh, God. Oh, yeah, I think Truth is Scary Fiction. Didn't he share this on Twitter? Okay, so... Top tier, we have Living Megalodon, Black Demon, Challenger Teeth, The Globster. H how do you pronounce that? Zoyu Maro? Globster. Oh, I think you can actually, like, I think you can actually show it on stream. But no, Truth has sent me that, and I was just like, well, damn. This is going to have to be a few videos. <laughs> I thought there was just going to be a few, but I guess it's called the iceberg for a reason, right? 38 entries total. 27 meter Australian shark. Jesus Christ. Well, one for example, like, I think it's on the second one, the Tamir Sea Shark. So, basically, from what I found from what that one is, it's basically a giant Wobegun shark. Now, I say giant, but Wobegun sharks, people, people don't realize how big they get. They get to around 9.5, 10 feet. And this one was supposed to be like a 15 footer, right? People said it was supposed to be like a quote unquote man eater, but I can debunk that in a sec. But I heard you were going to say something. Uh, nothing. I was just like breathing or something, looking at the thing. Let's continue. Yeah. So, on my research for the uh, Timor Sea Shark, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, when I was doing my research, folks were saying it's like, hey, it has 50, 50 attacks on record, no fatalities. So, what I did, and actually, I, I wonder if I can share my screen. A touch if I let me. Oh, no, say here, I and then let Ben me Roche and Tyler Greenfield. A couple cryptozoologists there. Zane and Lauren Gray. Oh, screen sharing now. Let's see. So, are you able to see mine? Yeah. Okay, so they said for the Wobby Gun for the Tamar's Guy 15 confirmed. If we look at the International Shark Attack file by species, 
Obi Gun is on here. <coughs> but uh -huh. There's three entries. So the two main species they call them are the spotted Obi Gun and the ornate Obi Gun, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. And for context of the people at the top here, we have non fatal bites, fatal bites, and then the total. Now, here we've got four and three, which is a total of seven. Then they have Wobegon here, which, if I'm understanding this correctly, this is Wobegon's as a whole at 31. So that's where I was having a level of skepticism. I was just like, so where did the 50 come from? Then also, why were they calling it a man eater if there's no fatalities? Hmm. So the basically the conclusion that I came to is now giant species of animals is not something that we've never heard of like the average human male is around five foot nine five foot ten then you have shack you have wild world has covered this plenty of times where the average great white at least when it comes to females is around 16 17 18 feet but then there's deep blue so is it possible that there could be some big 15 foot wobby gun out there that would more than likely be the branded species sure but is it as a man eater no. Obi guns, the only time they've bitten people is when they've been stepped on or when they've been provoked. It's usually the only time. Hmm. Yeah, just had to make that point. But that's the type of like how in depth I'm going with certain things as far as that goes. Hmm. Could just be exaggerations just grown over the years, like the fifty thing. You know, like that fisherman's that whole thing of the fisherman's tail. At first it was a 6 foot fish, then it becomes 10, 12, 14. So maybe a tech... Well, yeah. Again. So maybe this giant... Yeah, look at it. So maybe this giant Wobbegon attacks someone like once or twice and then, oh, it's killed 50 people or whatever. Yeah, they said it attacked 50 people and they called it a man-eater, but there were no fatalities. It's just, it's little stuff like that that jumps out to me. Again. Look at any Wild World video of all the videos he's done. And again, this is the reason I like his video so much is because it approaches every topic with a healthy dose of skepticism. And like he asked experts, and he goes into like, hey, did all this stuff really happen? Or, hey, did all these attacks really like, did this many people really die? Now, in some cases they did. Again, he covers it in great detail. But some of them, he approaches it with a healthy dose of skepticism. And I'm usually like, Nine times out of ten, he's right with it. And that's why I like Wild World's videos so much, because he approaches it with that detective skill and that skepticism, which you need to be in science. <coughs> hmm. Yeah. It reminds me of once when I was having a conversation with someone about uh, thylacines and the whole thing of them still being alive, because hmm. said friend, they're they sort of lean towards, like, the believer side of Phylacines being alive. And he has a couple people we talk with who just outright deny a f possible Phylacine survival. And I remember he even sent some stuff where they compared it to being a flat earther. Which I find utterly stupid. <laughs> because, well, at, <laughs> a, as I said to him, right, they said they're going, oh, it's a... It's a f it's a well known fact the phylocene's extinct, but the thing is, is that you're challenging that idea, which is the whole point in science, right? Rather than going phylocene's extinct, tigers the largest cat to ever live, dinosaurs were cold blooded. Instead of just saying those are straight facts, you go, is the phylocene really extinct? Is the tiger really the biggest cat alive today? Are dinosaurs really cold blooded? And then you test and see, well, maybe the lion's the largest. Maybe phylocenes are still alive. And maybe it is the case that dinosaurs were, in fact, warm-blooded. Strength of an idea is only tested in the crucible of open debate. And again, this is why science is always written in pencil. Hmm. Well, right, like, like, I remember talking to them once about, um, like, the size comparison between lions and tigers, and I remember he just went to me, it's a commonly known fact the tiger is the larger of the two. And that's when I went to him, that's how politics works. Politics works on a majority thing, not science, which is like, okay, so we've analysed a hundred tigers, and we've analysed a hundred lions, the lions came out larger than the tigers, on average.
basically it's the same thing to where it's like um again i, I know i've been talking about it a lot but um Wild Bull did a video on lions versus tigers and that whole debate. And people yeah. was just like, which species is the stronger? And the point that he brought up at the end that I always bring up, especially when it comes to sharks versus dolphins or any animal, is that whoever wins a fight is more dependent on the individual rather than a species. Hmm. Yeah, but to like, a certain extent... To a extent... Wait, sorry. Well, for me, to a certain extent, with the hypothetical matchups, you get like Lion versus Tiger. I feel like going, it depends on the individual. It sort of feels like a bit of a cop out in a way. Like, uh, you, I don't want to talk about it. it. Just depends on the individual, because with a lot of these people, wouldn't they be talking like, oh, if you average them out, who would be the better of the two in a fight? And that's when you get the debate. Yeah, I, I get it. I mean, I put it to you this way. It's just like, hey, look, if you took two humans and you put them up against, you know, like some animal, who's going to win? Well, it depends. Is the human going to be just, you know, a guy who has a desktop or is it Brian Shaw? They're both the same species, but very different individuals. You know mm. what I mean? That's more of what I mean. It was just like, hey, there's, there's a shark that's been battle hardened. It's used to hunting other marine mammals. Whereas you have this shark that's just like, hey, it usually sticks to fish or things that are easier to hunt. If it were to go up against something else, which is going to probably come out on top. Hmm. Different sharks have different preferences, even to the point where some prefer to hunt in open water and some prefer to hunt in shallows. Yeah. Right, shot isn't, or yeah. Brian Shaw. Is he... A, yeah. I saw zoned out for a second. Is he a shark researcher? Oh, Brian Shaw? No, so he's he's a he's a heavyweight lifter. Ah. If you actually, like, look him up, Brian Shaw, he, he is actually, like, an actual unit of a human being. He's, quote-unquote, American strongman. Like, let me see. Holy... The guy is around 340 to 400 pounds. Yeah, you see how big he is? I think he's, like, 7 feet tall. Who is an absolute unit. <laughs> and that just goes and that just goes back to what I was saying. Okay, so his height officially, he's forty two years old and he's six eight. And he's a strong man. But take somebody who's like the average human male, who's like five nine, put him next to Brian Shaw. They're the mm. same species, right? But they're different individuals. And that's the point I try to bring to people. It it reminds me of um I was researching some stuff on the size of Pumas. And I remember, right, I came across something saying there was a 170 kilo puma reported, which is like 370 something pounds. So, oh wow. Uh, just for comparison, that's about the size of a large lioness. So, this thing was lioness sized. Uh, but if I remember correctly, it's believed to have been an overestimation. And they believe an actual record holder would be a 125 kilo individual that was recorded without its intestines. So I remember talking with the big cat enthusiast that I know, Nighty, on Discord. And I remember asking him, like, do you know the percentage of, like, um, uh, like how much the intestines make up in weight on pumas? He said he didn't know. He knew for lions it's, like, around 12% the weight. So it's probably, like, 9 to 10% for pumas. But uh, I remember him saying he reckons this thing probably would have been around like 140 kg. So, <laughs> yeah, that's still a big boy. I mean, like I remember him saying, oh, your typical puma's like half that. And like I remember him saying, I'm sort of skeptical to believe it, that something that big exists. But at the same time, as I remember him pointing out to me, right, the Typical southern lion, as he calls it, the southern subspecies, Panthera leo melanochaeta, of African lion, or lion, <coughs> pardon, uh, is like, I think he said, have 400, nearly 400 individuals he's collected, average out to 198 kilos, but there was recently one lion verified that was 110 kilo, no, 310 kilos, so that's like, 680 pounds, nearly, nearly 690. So, oh, interesting. 
So it's over three hundred. So it's over fifty percent larger than uh, your typical African lion, southern lion. I, I wasn't saying a puma was around three hundred kilos. Tronotherium. I was saying a lion was. But yeah, I'm I'm just looking at that like, yeah, as you see, Wild well, World, just good lord, that thing would have been a monster. <laughs> yeah. The thing would have been a unit. In a Tyranotherium, I do not have any Megalodon teeth. <laughs> yeah, 310 kilo line, just Jesus Christ. Oh, and... The thing would have been a unit. If I remember correctly, uh, he also said, just for comparison, like, largest tiger recorded in modern times, Bengal tiger, it weighed 320 kilos, but it had a full stomach. So, dropped it down by about 30 kilos, so it's around 290-ish kilos. Yeah, I mean, absolute this, units regardless. Yeah, I mean, this the lion was... That means that lion was around, like, 20 kilos larger than that tiger. Still absolute units, but it's like, I don't think I want to mess with the lion. <laughs> like, if I had to choose, I'd go with the tiger. <laughs> Like, me personally, I wouldn't mess with either. Like, I'm not a small guy, but <laughs> no thanks. Yeah. Uh, I remember also seeing some stuff where you have people going around saying, oh, largest Siberian tiger recorded in modern day is only like 212 kilos. Nighty showed me a spreadsheet where it was recently confirmed a 270 kilo tiger, Siberian tiger was confirmed. And I'm just sat back thinking, good Which lord. Works. That thing would have been a monster. Yes, it would have been. And so and so here's here's another interesting aspect to look at it for people in general. So we know about all the fossils that we get, whether it be dinosaurs, theropods, Siberian tigers, sharks, whatever. <laughs> we're finding all these fossils and we're finding averages, right? Mm-hmm. So one thing to think about is there were much more of these species that existed around. Like, the fossils only represent maybe, like, 1% of how many of them there actually were. So imagine that there were some individuals that we haven't even found yet. I think I know where you're going with this. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm saying just, like, ranges can vary much. Again, back to the human example. We've mm -hmm. got some humans that are very short, like, I for nothing. Then, like, I think the tallest human was, like, 7.3, if I'm not, not mistaken. One of those things. <laughs> I think Robert Wadlow, who's, like... Very that much. I think Robert Wadlow was 8.11. Oh, it's, there goes my point, yeah. There's different variations of it. So, like, we have these averages, and we said, like, okay, yeah, T-Rex was around 13 meters. And then next thing you know, somebody finds, like, tooth fragments or enough of a fossil to where you can go, hey, by the way, here's a 50-foot rex, which, Jesus, a 50-foot rex would be crazy. I'm not saying T-Rex was 50 feet, but imagine that. We were able to find that. That's why science is always written in pencil. Sizes change. Again, in before Spinosaurus. Hmm. A wild world brings up a good question. If populations weren't so low, will we see bigger tigers? Some tigers weren't hunted as well, Wild World, because usually with game hunters, people are always going to try to go for the biggest because they want the title of killing the biggest and baddest for some reason. I remember I remember Creature Challenge with quite a few videos he's done on Siberian tigers when he puts them up in fights like Grizzly Bear or Lion. Uh, one thing he commonly ends up saying when it comes to their size was, and I, from what I know, I think I even found the study, but it's in Russian. So, I need to find a translation of it, but I remember from it, if I remember correctly, we found historically, Siberian tigers averaged 215 kilos. Meanwhile, modern ones, according to them, is like 170-something, 176, I think they said, so that's a decrease by like 39 kilos, somewhere around there. However, one of the things I found interesting was... A book published around the same time this study was, 2002's Wild Cats of the World by Fiona and Mel Sunquist. They state in there that there's not much weight data available on wild Siberian tigers. Um, then, in 2024, 
I remember Nidy showed me a weight table a friend of his made on Siberian Tigers, where it was of, I think, like 34 specimens, and they averaged out to, I think it was 196.4 kilos, so a drop of only, what, not even 20 kilos. Still big. Yeah. Yeah. However, at the same time, quite a few old reports exist of tigers, Siberian tigers and Bengal, if I remember correctly, between 100, no, 315 and like 400 kilos. Uh, and from what I know, it's believed most of these are just exaggerations. One thing I like to think of here and there when it comes to some of them, like with a 389 kilo Bengal tiger reported that apparently is on display at the Smithsonian uh, Museum. Uh, Jesus. One thing I like to think about that is maybe they just ended up making a typo. Maybe they meant like 389 pounds, but they accidentally put it in kilos. I wouldn't put it past people. And not just that, but if I'm incredibly in India, there was apparently for the viceroys, the Indians had a ruler that was 11 inches to a foot. And they would always, like, try and put the measuring tape as deep into every crevice they could into the tiger to get as much length as they could out of it. Just to try and extend out the length. Well, you, you actually bring up a good point there. Like, this is why I think it's always helpful to look at what some people did in the past as far as their methods. So you're going to be like, okay, what did they do incorrectly about their methods that we do now? What were some assumptions that we made that we look at now that are like, wait a minute, this, this is incorrect. For example, with Megalodon, when they first decided to decipher how big Megalodon was, he said it was like 85 to 100 feet. But the reasoning for that is because they took all the biggest teeth they could find and stick them in a set of jaws. Now <coughs> it's a bit more conservative at 65 feet. Still big, big effing shark, but... Mm -hmm. To your point, where it's just like they would try to stretch it out. And it says that those methods were wrong, but I mean, they were back in the day, so it's like, who knew? Back then, that was considered the norm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know it's. Well, right, well, well brings up a good point. With a lot of the stuff he's read for how big videos, it seems like people overestimate and exaggerate a lot. And I can see yes, what he means. Yes, they do. Like, I remember one of the mates I have at the school I've been going to, he's like six foot three. I remember the first time I saw him, it was one of those things where it's like, Jesus Christ, I didn't know they made you. <laughs> right? Because, yeah. like, my, like, it, it, it's been a while since like I've measured my, myself, uh... but I think I'm somewhere around, like, I think five eight, five nine, somewhere around there, maybe five ten. So, you know, he's like head and shoulders above me. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm six feet, but my boss is like six five, and I'm I'm not exactly a small guy. And now I look at him, it's just like, I bro, look, I don't know what kind of milk you drink, like what the breed of cows that gave you the milk that you drank, but Jesus. <laughs> Let's see, what is shark three sixty five saying? Let's see here. It, there was a pair of white sharks that were hanging around there around twenty six feet. Twenty six feet might be a touch big, but I also know Wild World's done a video on them. Deep blue is usually about as big as we consider them to be. Now, could there be some slightly bigger? Plausible. Sure, plausible. All I think of when it comes to, like, just giants is, uh, you know, the comedian Gabriel Iglesias? I'm just thinking of one he did where it was sort of <laughs> like, he, he had a stand set up with t-shirts and merchandise, and the, I think he said the shirts went up to 5X, right? And one guy... Still came up to him and went, you don't have my size. And I remember him saying, he was just sat back like, dude, I didn't know they made you. Yeah, I remember I saw that stand up. Yeah, Gabriel Iglesias, funny guy. But no, it just goes to show like all the different ranges. Like, again, this also goes for like, I guess, intelligence is another one. So you've heard of the IQ Bell distribution curve, right? Uh, I think I have. <laughs> Where basically, I wonder if I can actually just find a picture of it and send it to you, but it's basically like it shows like here's the distribution of where most people fall, and you have the uh the average is around 95 to 105. Mm -hmm. Let me see if I can find it and put it in the chat so you can see it, but that's where most people fit. Then you've got some guys who have like stupid high IQs, like 
uh, let me see, let me find this picture really quick, just so I can like show for more reference. Uh, let's see, I think I downloaded it somewhere. I think. Hmm. <laughs> mm. Oh, I love it once, right? Where, so I have the book Ancient Sea Reptiles by Darren Naish. Great book if you ever decide to look at marine reptiles. Uh, great beginner's book. But he listed off further reading as well. Oh yeah, I see the bell curve, yeah. Yeah, I've seen this before. <laughs> Just the range you get. Yeah. Goddamn, imagine being the person yes. with below 55 IQ. Well, yeah, so and so I'll tell you an interesting revelation about that. But you see, that's where most of the people's bell distribution curve they lie. But there's still some people who are on the stupid high IQs. Like, for reference, I got my test and I think mine was like 131, if I remember correctly. It was somewhere in the 130s. But that was where my IQ was. And that's like 2% of the population, but they still exist. But then I know I have like at least two friends where one of them, his IQ was 150, and another one, his is 160. I was just like, bro, I didn't know you existed, man. What the F? <laughs> no, so. I guess, well, first make your point, because then I have something funny that also kind of might explain where some people, or why some people have trouble making friends as far as IQ goes. You got a point you were making? Uh, well, I was just going to say, right, so with Darren Nature's book, Ancient Sea Reptiles, it has a further reading section, and I ended up getting one of the books, Oceans of Kansas. It's on my desk right now, alongside Sea Reptiles. But I remember, right, one of the things that happened was we were expecting it to turn up, like, why isn't why is it taking so long to turn up? And then my sister goes like, "Oh, I've got a package. I think it's for Dad. Uh, worm food." So they're like, "Worm food? What?" And it turns out that was just the label on the bag saying it's biodegradable, and it was a six XL lab coat. Somehow, the people we ordered from had messed up and sent us a six XL lab coat instead of Oceans of Kansas. And I remember just going, like, I could imagine myself being like Bon Scott in the Let There Be Rock music video, wearing this thing, looking like a priest. <laughs> How do you mess that up? That, that's my question. <laughs> I love that. How do they mess that up? Just 6XL lab coat instead of a 400-page book. <laughs> that's... Like, like again, that, um, I'm trying to process that. I was like, how do you actually do that? But, uh, I guess, uh, it's just the point where I was going to make it as far as IQ goes. Sorry, go ahead. No, no, go on. I was saying, in a wild world for the record, look, if you do YouTube or you do as much research as guys like us do, your, your IQ, you're, you're at minimum, minimum. Bet money yours is at minimum at least 120. And that's at minimum. I'm, I'm guessing it's higher, but at minimum. And for those who, like, want to guess, want a quick <coughs> rapid fire one, here's what I'm going to put inside the, uh, the chat. This here on this site, it's a, uh, it's a quick free IQ test. It's a very quick one where it gives you a range of what your IQ could possibly be. It's pattern recognition and it is timed. What you do is you take it two or three times. And you look at the ranges, and that'll roughly tell you where you fall in on the distribution. Just in case if there's anybody who's interested about that. But I actually did have to take, like, an actual one, and then mine turned out to be, like, 130. But to the point I was going to make with that, I imagine your IQ is pretty high as well, Calvin, because you doing, doing school research on somebody's COVID and checking the sources of it, like, <laughs> average people don't do that. And I, and I say that with love. I say that as a compliment. <laughs> But, so, what is, what IQ does somebody have to have in order for them to be considered clinically retarded? And I'm not trying to, like, make fun of anybody, like, clinically, like, from a scientific standpoint, you, like, you are slow, you need help. What IQ do they need to have? As far as I know, you had to be below 70. Yep, exactly. 70. So that's what you have to be considered. So where people, like really, really smart people, folks who are introverted or like just don't like other people, like myself, is 70 is one to two standard deviations below the average IQ, like 30 points below that. So when you get guys like me who have an IQ around 131, and I'm talking to average people, these people are not clinically retarded. Because they're 30 points below 
EIQ, my brain in the back of it is saying it's just like you're talking to somebody who's like not right in the head or somebody who's slow or who annoys him. That was kind of a revelation that someone told me and I was like, you know, that kind of makes a lot of sense. <laughs> I, I don't like that that's the case, but I get where you're coming from. You know what I mean? That may explain why there are some folks who just don't like people. Uh, this is giving me vibes, right? Because the uh, the uh, classmates at the school I go to, alongside the main teacher for the year 12s, ended up finding out that I have an interest in Australian big cats. Legendary big cats reported across the entire continent. And I remember talking about one of the year 12 girls, because I'm in year 12, about it. And... I remember I was writing stuff up on the whiteboard just to sort of visualize everything and get it out of my head, just to try and see and understand everything better. And I was writing about pumas, pumas, because that's one of the main identities. Pumas, mountain lions, cougars, whatever the frick you want to call them, catamount. Uh, and I remember she just went to me like, what's a puma? And I'm just sat back thinking, oh my god, I'm talking with a simpleton. <laughs> just... How do you? Okay, it's like I don't know, maybe, look. Maybe some people are shocked. Maybe some people who don't know that there's like a puma. Maybe there's some people who genuinely don't know. But like that—that's when I turn around and ask, "Like, do you know what a big cat is?" It's like, yeah, yeah, that's a puma. What does it look like? Google. Well, the thing I found even more crazy is she knew what the brand puma was, and I'm just sitting thinking, like, what? You never thought what the big cat is on there? What? You thought it was a lion or something? Exactly. But yeah, I, was, I remember just being sat back thinking like, you know what, I'll Google a photo of one to show you what it is. And then she sat back like, oh, that's a mountain lion. And I had to explain to her there's like 40 different common names for Puma. Yeah, yeah, the, there are a number of animals with multiple nicknames. And uh, speaking of uh, nicknames, uh, I see Tyrannotherium earlier. He asked like, hey, what are our thoughts on Big Al being a female? Uh, Never well, heard of that honest, before. So Big, so Big Al is an Allosaurus, one of the bigger Allosaurus species that are out there. And, they, and I guess <coughs> somebody's coming out saying, like, hey, it might be a female, which I don't know, I'd have to look into because I, I, I still, I don't know how we would tell what is a male and female as far as theropods go or dinosaurs in general. Like, for example, you know about Sue and Scotty, right? Yeah. So Sue and Scotty, we actually don't know what the gender of either of them are. They were just, those are just the names they were given. So Sue could have been a male for all we know. It's just that was the name it was given. Because we don't know how to identify either or. So I, I'd have to do more research on it to see, like, if it was a, uh, if, I guess, to see if the guy was in fact a female. I wouldn't know. Hmm. Yeah, for more I know, it's pretty hard to actually sex a dinosaur. Uh, it it is actually rough. Oh look, yeah. See, there we go. Puma. I'm putting it in the chat. Excellent. Yeah, I love that. Just oh, oh, what's a puma? Y you know the brand, you but you don't know the animal. <laughs> look, these days, most people are very materialistic, so they're more focused on that type of stuff. Never understood the appeal, but that's just me. And. The thing I found even crazier is she said she'd she'd be okay with debating me on the subject of these cats' existence. Like, so I've what? Yeah, that, then I just went to her since I don't want to be sat back debating with someone who's going to be just doing like willful ignorance. I just went, oh, I can give you some of the books I have so you understand where I'm coming from. Her response just. Oh, no thanks, i got math tests coming up and I'm really busy. I remember her saying to one of her friends once, just like, if I wasn't on my phone all the time, I'd have tons of time to read books. Like, go. Or you can just put the phone put, down. Put down the phone. And see, that's, that's a... So, debate is a... Debate is a word that has been bastardized nowadays, because... Very rarely do people have true debates online. Most of the time, it's just it ends up being just two people just screaming at each other. You're an asshole. Or you're an asshole. And that's the debate. Just people screaming at each other. Very rarely 
do people truly have a debate where it's just like you have two individuals a topic is decided on both individuals they bring their facts to the table and there there's a there's a respect to it here i believe like so let's say i had to debate somebody about shark intelligence i'm gonna be like hey look based on this data and these behaviors here's why i think sharks are far more intelligent than people think then whoever my opponent would be they would present their evidence and for both of us the only attachment is to the truth so if i got into a debate somebody and they presented more facts than me uh, there is no hate on my part because we both got closer to the truth like hey look you know what those facts they're better than mine cool i can see the point that's what a true debate is not just two people screaming at one another very rarely do actual debates happen mm. I will admit I'm interested in actually like doing a debate on do the cats exist in Australia to the point that I remember just being sat back thinking like um, is there anyone else I can debate and then I remember one of the year 11 girls is like literally the only other person in the school doing the biology class so I ended up asking her if she knew anything about big cats and she said no and I remember just being sat back thinking well I'm fucked <laughs> <laughs> No, I, I, I get it, like, because, again, this goes back to high IQ individuals, which, if, if I had to guess, I'd say you, you're a high IQ individual yourself, despite just, like, some of the basic mannerisms and some things you do. You want to have a good debate with somebody, not for the sake of, like, oh, I beat him, but it's just, like, you genuinely find it interesting. You're sharing facts. It's stimulating, in a way. <coughs> Pardon. Uh, for me, it's just, like... Well, I might be interested to hear some outside views from the on the whole alien big cat thing. Thanks, yeah, Wildworld. I, I would say if you do want to debate... Yeah? <laughs> Appreciate it, Wildworld. But I would say uh, if you do want to debate somebody, a big piece of it is picking out your, a good opponent. Somebody who you know they're, they're not going to come to the table from a disingenuous standpoint. Like, they're going to be like, okay, you know what, let's... Let's have a conversation. Like, you know, I always say in my videos, have a seat at the table. Let's have a seat. Let's have a conversation. Hmm. Very rarely do people want to do that because you can't tell anybody. Thanks, nowadays. Or well, for half the time of this girl I was talking with about it, she just always seemed to just come off of like very this sort of like disingenuous, bad faith approach to it. So I'm being sat back thinking, I want a better opponent if I'm going to debate anyone. Yeah, or not even that, it's just like, it's like, as you get older, because I'm, I'm 31 right now, I'll be 32 in December. As yeah. you get older, you begin to be able to assess when somebody is about what they're saying. Like, hey, I want to debate you. You're able to assess that it's just like, do you just want to actually debate me, like have a conversation like adults, or do you just want to call me an asshole? Because you can call me an asshole right now, and I can go about my business. I'm a busy man, I got stuff to do. You're a fine gentleman, I'll say that. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate it. And no, Sharks, sharks 365, they do not have dimension, I can confirm. They do not have dimension. Yeah. I remember just joking to my parents that with the year 11 girl doing biology, maybe I should like try and rope her in into researching big cats. <laughs> so that way finally I can train my own opponent. But look, you'll be, you'll be better off checking for somebody in your audience or going to another channel and be like, or maybe checking out your uh, other person, Schoonover, the Carnotaurus, to be like, hey look, I want to have a debate, but... You guys like have a talk like on Discord or something, and then you have a conversation and be like, hey, you know, let's have a discussion about this. It's called the debate, but all it really is is you guys just having a conversation, which is all it really is. That's maybe, how more information gets out to that's what people like. Maybe Wild World should get me on for the next cryptid court. <laughs> Australia's big cats. Yeah, be... Hey man, look. If he asked, I'm sure a number of folks would be happy to get on his podcast. <laughs> Let me guess, someone's about to make a humanity joke. So, so walk me through this humanity thing, because I, I apparently I, I missed that meme or that joke. <laughs> humanity. I know folks are trying to like, hey, let's let's have humans and chimpanzees breed. Like I get that, but I, I missed the whole the humanity cult. I missed that thing. 
I love that. What a transition. We go from, oh, it'd be interesting to see a debate about alien big cats and see if they actually exist in Australia to, what the fuck is humanity? So anyway, to explain the law of the humanity. Oh, basic there's a law. <laughs> there's a lot of law. But anyway, um, <laughs> so, so Gecko and I... We were on a Discord call once, and we were extremely bored, so we started sending each other pictures we were finding online of animal hybrids. And I was getting all of mine from this one website called MessyBeast.com. <laughs> you can already see Gecko in the chat just screaming no. Yep. <laughs> yep. But anyway, yep, I see him. <laughs> right, so they had an entire section on animal hybrids, and then I go, hang on, hang on a minute. And I scroll down, and at the bottom... Hybrid animals, primates, and I just hear Gecko screaming, Don't you dare send me anything! Don't you dare send me anything or I'll block you! <laughs> so then I scroll down <laughs> to the very bottom of that article. Humanzy and other claimed human hybrids. <laughs> Sadly, there were no images I could send him. But then it basically just became a joke of me sending him humanzy here and there. Just going, hey, guess what? What? Humanzy. And now it's just grown out of proportion. <laughs> to the point God, that... Humanzy. To the point that... I remember he even got messages from other people saying Humanzy. And now he's typing. What What has he just sent me? <laughs> and, and see, the thing... The, the, the screwed up part is like very much like the first Jurassic Park movie. It wouldn't surprise me if somewhere out there there's a scientist who's trying to make that hybrid. Why? Because they can. What's the quote from Jurassic Park? Everybody's heard it. And I think I know, I sent an article to uh, Wild World not too long ago. Oh god, it's Gar King. Yeah, it's Scar King. But, uh, yeah, but uh, I, I know I sent an article to Wild World not too long ago about how they're trying to resurrect mammoths or they're trying to resurrect dinosaurs of some sort and everyone's just like, bro, there's six Jurassic Park movies. What are you guys doing? <laughs> oh, you should see an article I found on Humanzy. Where it was something saying, like, it is time to make Humanzies. And it said, I think the subheading was something like, the Humanzy is both scientifically plausible and morally defendable. And I'm just sat back thinking, like, 12-gauge shotgun says otherwise. Yeah, the, the, see... And that's one of those where it's just like somebody says like morally defendable. I was just like, you're having that, someone that's, that's banging a chimp. Yeah, that that's where you want to sit down and ask somebody to be like, oh, you 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 have to explain to me what events happened in your life for you to come to the conclusion of, you know what I want to do with my life? Let's breed a human and a chimpanzee. Like you have to explain to me like where, what what happened in your life in order for that to come up? Like of all things, like I get some folks are bored. Some people need the stimulation for like have like something super complex to do. But like, it, it, there's 20 side Rubik's cubes, man. Like, there's other things you can do. And also like Sharks 365. I I've been obsessed with sharks since I was around like I don't know. Like, I just remember I was always obsessed with them. I don't even remember like what age I was or wasn't. But it was always the case. I love the thing you just sent me. Humanity choking Calvin after he summoned it. <laughs> Just Scar King choking yeah, Kong. Right there. Yeah, I, I I don't know if you've seen... Have you seen that movie yet? I've seen it. I liked it. I enjoyed it. Was it the greatest movie ever? No, but I mean... Hey, <coughs> I haven't I seen it, it yet, it no. Nah. Yeah, I won't spoil anything, but I enjoyed it. I like all the memes I've seen. Like, I saw that clip of Blake Kong using that small one. Suko as a bloody weapon. Just whack, whack. Yeah. I lost it laughing as soon as I saw that, just like, I could imagine doing that at school with some of the bullies, just like, grab a small one by the ankles and use him as a weapon. Yeah, look, I, I don't know if you, like, do you play video games at all? Yeah, here and there. Here and there, because I, I, I'm on PS5 and every now and then I play Destiny and I main Titan. And one thing people always imagine is like Titans using their teammates like Connors or Warlocks as like weapons when they run out of ammo. So that, that's personally why I find that funny. I love it. Gecko's now just sending me tons of stuff of Scar King as the Humanity as we're talking. Just 
I mean, I mean, look, it, it, it can it can fit in a way. You know, it looks like according to Wild World, it looks. Oh, this scene. <laughs> we have found the humanity. But uh, exactly. But uh, it looks like what Wild World said. Apparently, there's a chimp and gorilla hybrid. And again, this this is one of those where you gotta ask, like, okay, like of all things, like, well, what made you come up with this? Oh God, that Kong face is nightmare fuel. <laughs> Yeah, um, but uh, a human video games. What what games do you play? War Thunder, Hunter, Call of the Wild. Uh, trying to remember what else. Jurassic World Evolution Two. Nice. Yeah, I love it. People at the school here and there they ask me like, "Oh, what games do you play? Do you play any games? Do you play Fortnite?" And when I say I play War Thunder. They just step back like, what the hell's War Thunder? you think they would have heard of the document link leaks. <laughs> Please tell me you heard of the me, document leaks. Uh, I actually haven't. I'll be, I'll, look, I'll be completely honest with you. One thing I have heard of is, I don't know if you've heard of SCPs. Oh yeah, what is it? Secure, secure, contain, protect? Contain and protect. Yes, yeah, so uh, let me uh, let me link a YouTube channel where they go over a ton of these in like this very narrative voice, and I, I don't know if you're actually allowed to like <coughs> allowed stream, but here I'll put it in the chat for folks who are interested in stuff like that. Well, anyway, uh, let me see. How can I just switch this around? Move that up. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, look to the screen. I have the War Thunder Wikipedia page up, so you know it's serious. Document leaks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, hey, we can, eight. Hey, we can't see anything on our... Damn it! There it is. Okay, yeah, it was just a little bad. There we go, now we see it. You're good, you're good. Yeah. Seven, oh, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Oh, oh. that came <laughs> Twelve. No, thirteen, I think it is. Hang on, let me count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. 13. Leaks of military vehicles. Underwater thunder forums. Jesus. Jesus. Crazy, wow. Let's see. For games that I've, uh... I play. A big one for me is Remnant 2. Uh, Remnant 2 on the PS5, I played a little bit of Destiny, Arc Survival Evolved, or sorry, I guess Survival Ascended. Now, I've actually used some of the footage where, like, my video is like the shark swimming in the background, and I actually have more footage that I'm going to be using as some more background, so I've used that. Um, for other things that are outside of PS5, uh, I recently got into Magic the Gathering Arena, a free one. And yes, I tried to make a shark game on a uh, shark deck on that. Uh, I played Yu-Gi-Oh for the longest. I still have like one of my Yu-Gi-Oh decks. Uh, mm -hmm. This is a own game called Q, which is cards, the universe is everything, where you can literally make a uh, make a deck out of anything. Like you can make a shark deck, you can make a food deck, you can make an eating deck, you can literally make a deck out of anything. It's this card game, and it's free. <laughs> like, if you wanted to make a chimpanzee deck or a cryptid deck, you could literally do that. There's literally a crypt. There's literally cryptids in that game. Oh, here's a good meme Gecko just sent me. That. I'm pretty sure I made this meme. Oh, God. Me saying humanity, Gecko. Seconds later. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Whack. Well, I have not played the Isle. Let her go. Let me, as a matter of fact, let me check something. I wonder if somebody is actually, if one of the cards here is the Humanity. Nope, Humanity is not something in there. Like her. Also, Gecko has been developing his own video game for Time Forgotten, like a dinosaur barrel royale of sorts. And I remember he just... Really, 
I remember joking to him. I, I had it going for a bit. Just add the humanity to TTF. <laughs> Calvin. What do was just like having. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. Uh, I was just reading a meme he sent me. Calvin, when he dares, smells a bison in the vicinity while riding an ATV. That's me hunting bison in Call of the Wild. Just, ooh, bison. Call of the Wild. I've heard good things about the game. I haven't played it, but I've heard of it. And for me personally, Maneater, the game that folks are talking about, personally don't like the game. That's just me, though. Uh, I have played Maneater. I used to have it on my computer. I uninstalled it after I completed the game. I found it fun to play here and there, just one of those things where it's like, you know, just let out and just let out some anger, destroying people as a shock. But after a while it does just feel repetitive and annoying. So I yeah. always recommend if people are looking for a good shark game, look at the game Abisu. I just put it in the chat. Abisu. Fantastic game. It's my personal favorite game in the whole world. Hmm. Yeah. Admittedly, it's a short game. Like, you can probably complete the thing in an hour. But for me, it's just, that that game, it hits a special place for me. I have heard of Death as well, Gecko. Yes, I have heard of that game. <laughs> I can imagine it straight away. Gecko's just going to be, like, putting out every single, just, sh shark game he can find. Oh, you don't like Man Eater, so you don't like games where kill a shark. Okay. Let me find every single game I can find. So in other words, like, every shark game in existence. Yeah, something like that. Like, I know there was Jaws Unleashed. That was one I played when I was a kid. Mm. Yeah. Meanwhile, for me, my childhood, as far as shark games was concerned, Hungry Shark World, the mobile game. Yeah, I know about that game. Sp speaking of, you know, childhood and stuff like that, if you had to name your childhood heroes, fiction or non-fiction, and you folks in the chat can name this as well, who would you say your childhood heroes were? Me, for fiction, Goku and Sonic the Hedgehog. Easily. Those two were my childhood heroes and made my childhood. Honestly, can't really think of any. <laughs> if you don't have any, it's no big deal. What about non-fiction? Like, for me, big childhood heroes for me were... MLK, Crocodile Hunter, Teddy Roosevelt, which by the way, if you, you want to talk about a bad mf -er, look up Teddy Roosevelt. You want to talk about a tough guy? That man right there. Hasn't he been dubbed like America's most manly president? Yeah, like he had his own boxing ring. And he was boxing like by the time when he got old enough to where like he couldn't box anymore, he just straight up just started taking up jujitsu and folding people. <laughs> And Steve Irwin, yes. That that man was, was yes, he, he was a childhood hero of mine. I don't think I really yeah, ever... That, that hit me. I don't really think I oh, ever saw anything of Steve Irwin. Like, for me, as far as... I think as far as people are concerned when it comes to childhood, uh, for me it was Steve Backshaw with Deadly 60. Deadly 60? Have you heard of it? Sixty. Hang on. Let me see if I can just pull it up quickly. Well, I think for you, I'll just share my screen so that way you can see it in real time. Don't have to watch the stream itself. Deadly sixty. Yeah. So he's basically just yes, going around the world. Going around the world, looking at all sorts of interesting animals. I have the book. Yeah, I remember they covered quite a few sharks. I think they covered bull shark. I think maybe nurse shark. Definitely tiger shark and great white. Actually, oh, there it is. Shark right there. Huh. <coughs> Actually, I think they even covered, what's it called, um, the whale shark. Okay. According to Wild World, it said it might still be on Netflix, which, okay, that'd be nice. And yes, Shark 365, Teddy Roosevelt, he did get shot and still gave a speech. 
Could you imagine being the guy who shot him and you see him just get back up? <laughs> like, ha hang on. Oh, that... He didn't even fall. He just got... Just falls backwards. Worse, imagine shooting a guy and he doesn't go down. That's when we're like, okay, yep, mm -hmm. it's time for me to leave. That'd be one of those things where it's like, wait a minute, that's not how it's supposed to go. <laughs> exactly. You're just like, I don't know about you, but like, if I shoot a guy and he kind of just looks at me with a bullet right there in his chest, he'd be like, you know what? He, you know, what? just here's my credit card. You can just have whatever you want. It'd be one of those things where it's like, oh, for God's sake. <laughs> exactly. Or for fatality. That's another game I play, Monster Hunter. Monster Hunter World. One of my favorite games of all time. Oh, isn't there meant to be another dinosaur game coming out? I think it's called Instinction. That one looks interesting. I think it's also going to have Sabertooths in it. Extinction? That, is that a, like a, another game coming up? Like just flat out called Extinction? Yeah. I think it's meant to be like huh. a word mix of Extinction and Instinct. Hmm. So that'll be... It, well, it looks interesting. They claim to have like the most realistic animals of any dinosaur game. I think they even have saber tooths in there. So, that'd be interesting. Interesting. <laughs> okay. I like Gecko's comment, just, that saber tooth looks like a dog. Yeah, I will admit, it did sort of look weird. The face looked quite long. <laughs> but at the same time, Indeed. I, I know barely anything on saber tooths, so... I mean, I have yeah, I have the book Sabretooth by Maurizio Anton, which, as far as I know, is an amazing book to get when it comes to uh, Sabretooths. But I haven't really read through it, <laughs> so I know, like, nothing on Sabretooth mm -hmm. cats. Yeah, I'm, sharks are my specialty, so I'm not very well studied up on Sabretooths. I, I could probably name a thing or two about them, but I'm not as well studied as some other individuals. On a side note, I see in your Discord that you follow the uh, the Vidon, or the Vividon, whatever his name is, the guy with the dinosaur skull. I follow him too. Yeah. He was watching his videos yesterday about the new theropod. <coughs> I appreciated that he said, hang on, everyone. Up your breaks. It's just a fragmentary bone. We don't even know what it is yet. That's part <laughs> of the reason I like his videos as well. Yeah. Yeah, I like his stuff as well. I remember seeing people talking about cope like i remember someone asked a paleontologist on twitter about that copium rex specimen and then they replied saying they want something more concrete than youtube videos when it comes to size so i was just sat back like yeah, i wonder who they i wonder who they're referring to there yeah you see a lot of folks on youtube get themselves in a lot of trouble when it comes to stuff like that. Because, in matter of fact, hang on, let me see if I can't open up Photoshop real quick, just because th th this is the point I want to make and how I, like, kind of like how I assess people when it comes to stuff. Uh, give me a sec to set this up if you want to, like, check the uh, audience and everything. Mm. We'll do this. Then, uh, let me see if I can share my screen really quick. Okay. Uh, are you able to see my screen? Uh, no, you're not sharing it. Okay, let's try this. Okay, maybe. Okay, maybe we'll do with that one. Okay, so it's just not gonna let me. Of this, we're talking about dinosaur YouTuber and 
possibly paleontologists wanting something a bit more concrete than a random YouTube video. Meanwhile, there's an entire debate going on in the live chat about what Ethereum is. Ethereum. Uh, I'll, I'll be honest, I actually don't even know what Ethereum is. As far as I understand it, it's people who think they're animals, or identify as animals. Oh god, this thing again. <laughs> it's, it's like that video I sent you earlier of the furries at that school. Where apparently they were clawing, like, scratching, biting each other. Like, I, I, I get it, you know, tongue in cheek. There's a whole, like, hey, like I say, it's like, oh, I'm a shark all the time. Like, you know, tongue in cheek. But I get that, like, I'm not actually, like, a shark. It's just, you know, it's a running joke at the channel. It's just, that's just how we do it. There's some folks that, like, I don't know, they just take it a little far. It was just, like, <coughs> empirical data just doesn't seem to be a part of what they try to do. That's just me, though. Okay, let me see if I can set up this open. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, hopefully it works. Pardon, just burped. All good, all good. <coughs> Did you say you live in Australia? Yeah. Well, have you found? What, what sort of Australian meme are you going to send? Yes, I know everything here wants to kill me. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. I was just, you know... Making conversation. Okay, let's try this again. Retype it in. Isn't that a all right? Really, have you ever been to the United States? Nope. Not missing much. Here we go. Let's... Oh, let's not do that. Okay, here we go. So, I had to do a little bit of gymnastics with it, but you can make it work. So I'm basically mirroring the screen on my iPad as soon as it quits acting up. I have my iPad, my just tablet that I use to draw whenever I'm like out and about. I think Wild World's just gone silence after the Blade Fury debate. <laughs> okay, exactly. Who, who, I have no clue where he lives, so who knows, maybe it's probably like late at night for him and he's just decided to go to bed. I think he lives in Europe, keyword I think. If I'm gonna be honest, whenever I heard his voice, I always thought like UK. Okay, so now let's let's try this again. Yep. Okay. Now they see my screen. Yep. Let us see. Perfect. So. I'm, I'm, I almost forgot the original point I was making. Oh, that was, we, uh... We got distracted uh, with the uh, fearing. Categories into people's names. Yes, I did. So, I put people's intelligence, and let me actually go back, let me actually erase that. So, I put people's intelligence into three categories, right? So, we've got one to ten. These are people who usually don't know much, so little knowledge. Oh yeah, I remember this from one of your videos, I think it was the one you did on how there's no good shark movies. Yes, so this is usually where most people fall in, one to ten. These are people who aren't very well versed on the topic, so this could be about anything. So let's call this sharks, for example. Then you have ten to 20, so let's <coughs> circle this, and you have 10 to 20. 
This group is for people who can usually just regurgitate facts. And they know enough to like repeat what they've heard before, but they also know enough to get themselves into trouble, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Where like they can just say stuff out, but they don't get the proper context. They can see like, hey, look, this carnivore was the biggest ever. It's like, oh, okay, well, why was it? Because it grew to 40 feet long. How much did it weigh? Oh, uh, oh, I don't know. Or, hey, what the fragmentary bones was it based off of? Who was the scientist that said it? Usually they can't name that stuff off. And that's what I mean by like, going back to the point that you said, the paleontologist, like, I'm not going to YouTube to find out facts. I want to look at actual, like, you know, books or peer read reviewed articles. This is where most people get in trouble when it comes to stuff like that. Then you have 20, 30. And this is where, like, the people who actually know what they're talking about are. People who, like, who've done the research, who had the proper context, who can actually, like, are what I would consider subject matter experts. Me, for example. If I had to place myself on this chart when it comes to sharks, I'd say I'm a 23. 24 are my best days. I was about this to say, I'm... is where... I remember in your video you Wait. said 24, so I was about to say, have you slipped again? Or have you slipped up a little? <laughs> Just yeah, I'm 24 on my best days, but usually, average, I'd have to say I'm about a 23 in the realm of sharks. I'd say and that's kind of like how I break things down with anybody. Sorry, go ahead. I'd say I'm probably like, I don't know, 14 when it comes to sharks. Like, I'm not absolutely stupid. I know something, but I'm not like, oh, I know everything. I mean you know enough to, you know, be like, hey, I'm going to go seek out some other folks' content. That's why we always go and watch different folks to, like, get different things. Like, me, like, I'm studying stuff on cryptids, and it's taking a little bit longer because I'm nowhere near as well studied as, say, truth is scarier than fiction a wild world. I'd say if that was a cryptid chart, I have the feeling that truth is scarier fiction would be, like, 31. That dude, yeah, that dude is well versed. Like, I asked him about, like, hey, what do you know about this cryptid? And, like, literally, like, not even a minute later, he was rattling off. I was like, oh, yeah, that comes from this book, from this tale, and here's what people say about it. Here are the rumors. And I was just like, holy smokes. Like, I remember just being said back thinking, like, Jesus fucking Christ. This dude knows everything. And they say I'm a that walking dude is library. An encyclopedia. That dude is an encyclopedia when it comes <laughs> to cryptids. Dude's basically a walking library. The Library of Alexandria. On cryptids. Something like that, indeed. Meanwhile, with me on, like, other subjects, like with the alien big cats of Australia, I'd probably say I'm in that, like, 20 to 30 range. Because I've just... Yeah. I've read so much on it. <laughs> no, uh, so, on the point of what I was just showing, that kind of goes back to the, uh, the thing I was saying to where it's like, uh, as you get a little older, you kind of get, you can kind of assess where people are. Right? Like, say someone comes up to you and they say, hey, I want to debate you on this thing as far as paleontology, or I want to debate you about this Mosasaur. But you've dealt with enough people, you can kind of tell, like, is this person a 10, a 1 through 10, or a 10 to a 20? Or they actually like somebody who's just like, okay, you know what, we can have a conversation, like, they're a 20 to 30. And that kind of lets you assess, like, where somebody is. Mm. Now, look, sometimes you might be feeling like a chaotic evil that day. They're like, okay, you know what, this person's a 10 to 20, but I'll debate them to make them look stupid. <coughs> mm. Wait, look, I'm saying to someone about, like, the debating on alien big cats. I haven't just read, like, one book from some random crackpot and now I've just believe these things exist I have like seven different several different books on them read most of them <coughs> fuck you uh, and on top of that I have like over a dozen books on just regular wild cats so I've read a fair bit on these animals so I think it's safe to say that if I say I reckon there's cats out there it's going to be a lot better than just random crackpot whom I've, like, I don't know, read one book. Exactly. Or listen to a YouTube thing and they'd be like, okay, I know everything about it now. It's just like, and it goes a lot deeper than that. And uh, it looks like I've got two questions in the chat. 
Sharks 365. Shark Tales between Shark Week and Shark Fish. Which do you like more? If, if I'm being honest, I don't like either or. But if I had to watch one, it'd probably be Shark Fest. And that, look, they're, they're not much better than Shark Week from what I've seen. And I've actually, I have a video where I check out both and go over both two shows from them. Shark Fest wasn't... Shark Week was the worst. Shark Fest isn't that far behind them. I personally don't watch either, but that's just me. Mm -hmm. And it looks like Gecko's asking, like, what are my thoughts on the 15-ton Tyrannosaur with the intelligence of a chimp? The 15-ton one, I'd say 15... Any theropod getting around 15 tons, I'd say we're starting to stretch it just, just a little bit, at least based on current data, it seems we're starting to stretch just a tad. Uh, do you want to say something, Calvin, before I get to the intelligence part? Uh. I was just going to say, I wonder if Wild Wob would be interested in bringing me on to just debate alien big cats in Australia. <laughs> Look, I, I would tune into that. That'd be a lot um, more, I think that'd be a lot mean... better than that random girl I was talking with. Who, did, who didn't even know Pumas existed! Agreed. Definitely. At least, at least there could be an intelligent conversation happening on the podcast. That and it would be. Um, I'm guessing a two, answer... and I'm guessing it'd be a two on one, Mika and Wild World versus me. <laughs> I think you guys would have fun with it, because you wouldn't come at it, you wouldn't come at it from a disingenuous standpoint. I've heard both sides of the argument, so I'm pretty comfortable in my position, but I'll listen in. So. As far as the intelligence of a chimp goes, so this is a the thing that people have to realize about intelligence is one thing I always say is part of the human condition is that we are obsessed with ourselves. So we naturally identify with and we steer towards things that are a lot like us. That's why everybody loves mammals, but like reptiles, birds, and sharks, they're scared of or like, oh, they're not that dumb because they're not us. The thing that I always explained about other animals' intelligence and sharks in this particular the whole thing, it's always between dolphins and sharks. Mm -hmm. The way I look at intelligence is it depends on what the animal is doing. People say it's like, oh, we're so much smarter than sharks and we're better than them because of all the things we've built and all the technology we've done. The way I look at it is, why does a shark need to do any of that? We've been on this planet for 400 million years and been surviving that way. But... Mm -hmm. They're comparing their intelligence to our intelligence or the intelligence of a dolphin or another sea creature <laughs> is very much like who's smarter, a computer IT specialist or a surgeon. And the thing is, both of them are smart, but they're smart in different things. So if you walk up to the surgeon and ask him a question about comp TS Security Plus, A Plus, or some sort of super complex IT question, they're not going to know. And they're like, okay, you're stupid. No, it's just... That's not what he studied in. But if you go ask an IT specialist about human anatomy and about metabolism, visceral fat, things of that nature, then the, uh, they're not going to obviously know about that. But that's the way I always look at it with intelligence is it depends on what the animal is doing and what it does. And then, of course, there's also basic cognitive stuff like, hey, do you think quick res responses? Do they figure things out, etc.? Mm. That's just my thoughts, though. What are your thoughts on it? Well, for me, when it comes to the whole thing of, like, why is this animal so stupid, it's like, well, it managed to survive, and it doesn't need to do complex mathematical equations in order to get its food. Yeah, like I said, everyone always says, dolphins, oh my god, they're the humans of the sea, they're so smart. They're, they're so much smarter than sharks, and sharks still catch them. Sharks aren't dumb. Like, a shark, from the time it's born, it doesn't get anything from its pants. And in that time, it has to learn the ways of the ocean, what it can and can't mess with, and how to hunt. Now, admittedly, a part of that is that it watches other sharks, because we have seen that that's how some younger sharks learn. But they're still able to learn how to catch a variety of different things. Now, some sharks more than others, like bottom feeders, like wobegun, the nurse sharks, they don't need to figure out as much stuff as like 
the active hunters, but the point stands regardless. It reminds me of one thing I remember <clears throat> reading in Carl Schuker's uh, Still in Search of Prehistoric Survivors, I think it is. I think Wild World has, this, yes. has the book as well, so he'll probably know which part I'm talking about. It's in the introductory material, I think, uh, where he goes over of, like why native reports of things are so credible, you right? Because, well, unlike the white man sitting in his lab back in Europe or America, uh, some of these natives, like in Africa and all that with Macaulay and Bembe, they are, well, they have lived in the area for hundreds, if not thousands of years, so they're going to be familiar with the area. So if they come to you going, oh, we've seen blah, 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 it's going to be like, hmm, I wonder. Like, um, one of them, the mystery cat, the morosi, the spotted lion. If I remember correctly, there was this one... I heard about that, I don't know about it. There was this, like, one explorer, I think he was, like, British or German. Uh, he, he, he ended up going off, he became obsessed with it, and he ended up writing an entire book of him searching for the morosi in Kenya's Abadir Rangers. He ended up getting a letter from one woman who lived in the area asking why is he so obsessed with these things, right? Because, well, like, these people have lived in the area for God knows how long, so they've just gotten used to it. Like, if you were to come to Australia, you'd be set back like, oh my God, that's a kangaroo, right? You'd want to know everything about it. You're set there obsessed <laughs> with it. Meanwhile with me, I'm just set back looking at you like, what the hell's wrong with you? It's a kangaroo. Or, <laughs> I get it. Or like of how I had to go to an entirely different town to go to the school I'm going to, right? Right? The people at the school there, they're going to look and be like, oh, it's bloody blah, 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 blah. We don't really care all that much. Meanwhile, for me, it's like, I'm in an entirely new world. <laughs> <laughs> and all I have to say is I enjoy it a lot more than the hometown I live in. For um, particularly race, or somewhat slightly racist statements, I'm hate to gecko that I'm not going to repeat. Gecko, you better shut the fuck up. <laughs> but, uh, but, no, but right, it, so yeah. as you can see, it's, it's going to... Right, it's one of those things where it's like... Wait, sorry. They, they live in the area, so they're used to everything there, so they know a lot about the area. Right, like, I remember just out of interest, because where, cause where I live, right, we get kangaroos, but we only get red kangaroos. So what I asked them, right, do you get red kangaroos and grey kangaroos here? And they said, yeah. What do I know? A couple of days when I'm walking around the school during recess, I see a grey. Right? For one of the first times I got to see a grey kangaroo. So that was... Yeah, and it's like, you're not exposed to new things, and it's like, huh. It's just like, okay, I'm not used to that. Oh, also there's Gecko. Um, Alright, here we do. go with Calvin's war crimes. My lawyer has told me not to finish the joke. So anyway, I think Gecko had a question <laughs> for you. I think he did as well as Shark does. Uh, not, not Shark does, uh, Navarro as well. To Navarro's point, yes, there are animals that are more objectively than others. Or more intelligent than others. Objectively, you are correct about that. My personal argument has always been that sharks are far smarter than people think. I personally believe they're some of the smartest animals on the planet, just from, one, the fact that they've been on here for so long, two, the different prey items they were able to hunt, and just their adaptability. But you are correct. There are some animals that are just objectively smarter than others. I, I will concede that point to you. And to Gecko's question, as far as them, yeah, I could... So the thing about the... Uh, so when I look at intelligence, usually predators have to be a bit more savvy than herbivores do because they actually have to catch another living thing. So his point about them uh, setting traps and being in group behavior similar to chimpanzees, I'd say that's plausible. Because I mean, you know, working in a group to take down big animals like T-Rex lived with Triceratops and Kylosaurus and Edmontosaurus and a bunch of other things. So working in a group ups their successful chance. So I absolutely like as smart as a chimp, uh, I think we would need more research, but I do think that it was an incredibly smart dinosaur. Extremely smart.
See, Gecko's going off in the chat, man. <laughs> basically Godzilla. <laughs> like, every second comment is from Gecko right now. <laughs> oh, that, here we go. Hang Calvin's War Crimes. My lawyer has told me not to finish the joke. <laughs> Next one, I just teleport over to him. What you doing there, buddy? And I get what Gecko was saying. There's like one hard thing about measuring a shark's intelligence is it's a shark. Most people, they're like, oh, I don't want to do it. But one thing I'd be interested in doing at some point, say you see a young shark in the ocean, taking two foreign objects, neither of them be food, just having two foreign objects and just have them kind of float around and see if the shark gets curious. Because that's one thing I see in a lot of clips. Like, I don't, I'm sure you're familiar with the Malibu artist on yeah. YouTube and both Instagram or wherever the platforms. He's shown a couple clips where a lot of juvenile white sharks they'll look at something at the surface like a piece of cardboard or whatever and they'll just kind of take a couple minutes and they'll be swimming around it kind of like figure out what it is but the larger sharks they're like okay we've seen that and they'll keep swimming so there's a level of curiosity to it hmm. well, like i said to you right i'm used to seeing red kangaroos so it's like yeah it's a red meanwhile then i go to this boat new school. Ah, grey. Because, well, I've never seen a grey kangaroo in person until going there. Did you have the moment where you looked at it and it was a kangaroo, then you had to take two? You're just like, wait a second. That's a grey one. Well, I remember looking and thinking it's a kangaroo, but then I said, they're like, that don't look like a red. <laughs> <laughs> Right, because for me, currently, uh, I think greys, they're a little slimmer than reds. Not just that, but they also have, like, a more finer muzzle. Red one's pretty wide. <laughs> reds also have, like, this sort of stripe of white, and then another one of, like, black on the muzzle. You don't get that with grey kangaroos. Really? Yeah, okay. that's... Yeah, Reds can come in, like, different shades of coloration, so one of the main ways you tell them, tell if it's a red is just that uh, coloration, because it's always there from them, correctly. Oh, okay. I did, okay. Actually, hang on, let me see I if I can just... that there. Let me just see if I can look it up. I'll share my screen. As you can see, we have some pretty buff kangaroos here. So, let me see if I can find a good image. Where's the side profile? Yeah, so that white bit there, if I remember correctly. Uh, I can't see your screen yet, or maybe it may just be taking a moment. Hold on. Yeah, it's taking a moment. Ah. Uh, I have it both open on Discord and then on the stream. <laughs> so that one's a red one. Yeah, these are all reds. Because they, gray. these are reds because they have that white band there alongside the black one, and that muzzle. That's typically what you'll see of a red. It's sort of wide. Then if we just change it to now, there's two types of grey kangaroos. You have eastern grey and western grey. Grey is grey is the second largest. Yeah, as you can see, this one's more finer grey kangaroo muzzle. And they don't have the stripe. Okay, yeah, like, you, you could be forgiven for, like, just looking very quickly and not noticing, but when you actually look at those little differences, yeah, I see what you're talking about. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, yeah, now, now I definitely see what you mean. There, there is definitely a difference in there. <laughs> Both can end up absolutely shredded, though, and you don't want to mess with the males. Oh, oh, I know. You, you don't have to explain to me. I've seen kangaroos try to drown dogs. Yeah, the... And then, like, pe pe people know kangaroos... Sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say, the males, they, they do that, because, um... Well, like, they might have a pack of, like, dingoes or people on motorbikes with their dogs chasing them, and the male, the dominant male, he'll fall to the back of the mob of kangaroos, and he'll lead them away. And he'll go to the nearest body of water he can <laughs> find, and he'll just stand there, and he'll grab any dogs and try and drown them. That's how they deal with predators. 
Oh, I believe it. And honestly, like, and so here's another thing about animals in general. People know animals are big. And then they get next to one and they're just like, oh, <laughs> that's what they meant. Like, people like know kangaroos are big. And then you get next to one, you're just like, this, this thing is way larger <laughs> than I am. Oh, my. <coughs> I worked at a place where they had kangaroos. I remember someone asked them, like, oh, what's the largest kangaroo on record? So I guess this can be Wild World's next how big video. All right. The dude okay. went something like, oh, it stood, I think he said 2.6 meters tall, which, let me just look up a conversion for that. Uh, meters to feet. So 2.6 meters. Uh, eight and a half feet. <laughs> so b again, bigger than Brian Shaw. <laughs> and then he stated the weight was 115 kilos, so 250 pounds. He's more than me. So again, another good example of this is moose. Everybody knows moose are big. And then, and then you stand next to one of the things that's taller than your vehicle. You're just like, jeez. People truly don't understand how freaking big a moose is. <laughs> Just... Like a moose is an absolute unit. <laughs> oh, and scary part, if I remember correctly, I even read something saying that apparently there's been records over the years of 136 kilo kangaroos, which, um, that's scary. Yeah, that's extremely scary. Are you kidding me? Holy smokes. Like, like, and no matter... Sorry, go ahead. I was just gonna say, like, this thing would basically be, like, the Brian Shaw of kangaroos. <laughs> I'm kidding. Like, so, it, I don't know if you want to share your screen again, but if you, uh, just Google moose size, you can see how big some of those moose are. Yep. I'll just open it up on both both on Discord as well, so you don't have to watch the live stream to see it. Uh, moose, no, moose size. Holy fuck! Yeah, look at them next. To, yeah, look at them standing next to those cars. You're just like, oh, that's what they mean. They're big. Jesus. Basically, just a kaiju. Tallest human, 8'11", Alaskan moose. No, 8'11", that's the size of the hump. Actually, never mind, you're right, you're right, my bad. Jesus Go Christ. To images and you'll see. Go to images, like you see that one that's on the top left, the second one. That's it walking next to a car. Jesus Christ. Hang on, you know, I gotta look it up. That's next to a water condition. Tallest moose ever. Largest recorded Alaskan moose measured around 7.6 feet tall at its shoulder and weighed around 820 kilos. Holy. Yep, you see that? That's next to a. Moose are Ridiculous. <laughs> Holy f Oh, there's yeah, a screenshot from Hunter Call of the Wild. <laughs> now I was saying take it easy, Shark 365. Rest well. See you, Shark 365. It just It's like nature was set back like okay, yeah, let's moves, make this you... giant thing on legs. Exactly. Those things are friggin' units. Wasn't there an episode of Mythbusters where they reckon you could actually like leave a moose hanging in the air if you hit it fast enough because it was so tall? That you can like knock the legs out so from underneath you... it? So, so here's the thing. So you know the whole rule when you're driving, you'd be like, hey, if you see an animal, don't sway, just hit it. Just because it'll do more damage to your vehicle. 
Mm -hmm. Moose is the one exception to that rule. If you see a moose, you sway. Because moose are so big and so heavy, they will literally collapse your vehicle in. They are literally the exception to the rule when it comes to that type of stuff. Just... It's one of those things where you look and it's like, Jesus Christ. Now imagine hitting an elephant. Now imagine seeing that thing in real life. <laughs> I mean, you, you don't hit an elephant. The elephant hits you. Even if the elephant's standing still, the elephant still hit you. You don't try to hit it. Why are you even driving? Where are you driving that you actively are seeing an elephant? I don't know, Uganda. A fair point. How big uh, do elephants yeah. get? I don't know. <laughs> this one just destroyed my car. I, I always say, big enough. <laughs> I always tell folks, there, there's some animals like, you know, they're a bit like, one thing that will often freak people out when they go swimming with sharks is, it's not going to be that scary, just because usually sharks just ignore people. But people know sharks are big. And then one swims next to them, they're just like, well, all right, this, this, is, this is a Big effing fish. Biggest boy. I wonder if I have, like, uh, one or two that I can show where it's just like, where it actually shows like a shark swimming next to somebody. I wonder if I'd be able to, like, share it. Uh, let me see. It, it reminds me of just, like, I remember reading through one of the books I have on ancient marine reptiles, and they said, right, some estimates place mosasaurs at like 50 to 60 feet for mosasaurus. And it's one of those things where you look and it's like, uh, could you imagine that thing swimming around today? Any big animal swimming around today. Like the mosasaur swimming around. Like, it's funny enough, the Jurassic World for their advertisement, they always get the size of the mosasaur wrong. They say it's 60 feet and then you look at it and you're just like, that thing is way bigger than 60 feet, bro. <laughs> yeah, I think I saw some people saying it's like, the length of three 18 meter mosasaurs. So it's 180. I think most folks, like, it's, its size is so inaccurate. Like, if you type in Jurassic World mosasaur size, you'll see, like, the different things as to what it says. I remember, like, watching something where they were going over the size of it and they showed, like, scans from different guidebooks for films. And I remember they showed ones going from, like, as low as 60 feet all the way up to, like, 237. Okay, so here, let me, sh let me share my screen. So here, if you look at this picture, oh, Jesus. this is all the stuff that they show. So yeah, here's what the website said. It was. Here's what the promotional marketing stuff said. Here's what it was in 2015. Here's what it was in Fallen Kingdom. 65 to 75 meters. Oh my... Freaking God. Let me see if I can get a close up of that. There you go. Actually, wait, no, wait, it didn't show that way. Hold on, let me try that again. So you can get a little bit of a better look at that. There you go. Big boy. Uh, yeah, and this down here. It, this is this is an accurate mosasaur down here. I just thought of, I just thought of the scene from Greyhound. Let me see if I can find it. You know the movie Greyhound, the World War Two film. I heard about it. Yes. I'm just picturing just scenes from it when it comes to like U-boats, but instead it's mosasaurs. <laughs> Look here, just sharing my screen real quick. Not gonna play too much for copyright reasons. But like here with this part, just going through the bloody darkened seas, waves crashing everywhere. I could imagine that but with a mosasaur. I know, right? Just also, yes, Wild World, please. How big is the Jurassic World Mosasaur? Please do it. Please. I could imagine that just already. We, 
I love how half the stream has basically just become us going, I wonder what sort of how big videos he could do. <laughs> so we I have... Look. Hey. I'm trying to think, what have we put so far? Just how big Jurassic World Moses saw, how big kangaroos get, something else. <laughs> oh, and then the lion versus tiger size comparison. I mean, hey, look, there, there could even be some fiction ones that he decides to look into. Like, hey, how big can the species of Godzilla get? How big can Scar King get? <laughs> Things of that nature. Also, Gecko wanted me to send you that. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> the face on it is killing me. Yeah. Yeah, I remember for that blog I mentioned earlier, I'm actually planning on going over, like, Mosasaur size, so expect that. Where, uh, right, cause sometimes you get some different numbers, like 18 meters seems to be the highest, but from what I know, it's believed those are exaggerations. Because, uh, because I think one paper... Oh, wow. Uh, Wild World just commented saying, Actually, Calvin, I feel like you should do some how big videos for big cats. Well. Not again. I'd watch it. <laughs> I think I'm going to have to why ask not? Nighty for help. I mean, hey, it's why, it's why we're here, man. Wouldn't be a bad thing. But, yeah, but I've got to go ahead and be ready to go, just because I got I got stuff I got to do in the morning. Ah. Work. Okay. Well, I guess that brings this stream to an end. Yeah, roughly. But hey, I would love to do this again. Thoroughly well, enjoyed this. Well, I was going to say, I just remembered something, and that's that with um with these streams, I usually have a set of questions I end up asking him. Asking the people who come on. So we're probably going to need mm -hmm. to do a part two to have those questions answered. Oh, I mean, I, I got a sec. I can interview if you have, like, one or two of them. Yeah, no, maybe, I think I'll just save it for next time. Fair enough. All right, well, hey, look. It was a pleasure, Calvin. I'd be happy to do this again. Indeed. I'd be happy as well. Indeed. And the rest of you guys... Easy, keep watching Calvin's stuff, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. See ya. See ya. And there you have it, ladies and gents. I think I'll also head off as well now that the stream's concluded. Everyone have a nice day, and I'll try and get to the Mosasaur blog post as soon as possible, and I'll share it on a community post.